Okay. Okay, now, Bismillah. Uh, we start here, we talked about the tar target marketing process. Targeting marketing process, as we are all aware, consists of three main things, or three main stages, or three main components. Uh, it's a process of three steps. Market segmentation, targeting, and then ultimately positioning your brand in the mind of the consumer. When it comes to segmentation, just to understand, just to revise, why, first of all, do we have to do segmentation? Why don't we just produce one product, one version of the brand, and just give it to the whole market? Hmm. Why do we have to segment? What's happening? What changes happen in the market? Come on. Yell. I want to hear from you. Yella girls. Why do we have to segment? Hmm. Uh, Shuruk, to, go ahead, Shuruk. Uh, Why do we have to segment? Because consumers... Shuru, uh, can you can you come again? Can you come again? Yeah. Can everybody yeah. close the mic session? I hear Shuru. Uh. Because consumers' preferences and needs they change, and the market is very dynamic. So we have to segment the market to know um, which group of consumers we want to serve, because we can't serve everyone in the Bro. market. Yes, and also to be able to 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 serve the needs of the different segments, I have to segment to so understand them and define them. Perfect. Okay, so here, as you can see, as it's written here, you cannot satisfy everyone with your product, and this is why you have to segment and then target. And of course, the ultimate objective of the segmentation process is to identify all possible marketing segments that you can target now and in the future. Oh, and these are the target segments. Can you see them? These are different segments. All these. All these are different markets. Student, employee, businessman, wife, child, and you know, call, call it, all these are independent market segments that you can target now or in the future. And this is the ultimate objective. Why do we segment? To come up with this. Yeah, the ultimate outcome or the outcome of segmentation is to identify all possible segments that we can target and we can mix and match and create target markets and 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 so on. Tamam. Here, another very important question. On what basis do we choose or select segmentation variables? And yani for here, for example, in demographic, why did I choose occupation and life stage? Why not gender and income? On what basis do I choose? Yeah, someone answer. Hmm. Come on, try to guess. I explained it before actually, but I'm highlighting more now. Why? Come on. Hmm. Why from the demographic characteristics or demographic segmentation or basis uh, for Starbucks specifically, of course, there, yeah, we cannot generalize. We, uh, yeah, for each brand, we have to segment. And yeah. even if I have a company like PNG that has six or seven uh, different brands for a certain product, each brand has a separate STP. Each brand has a separate STP. Okay, is this clear? Tamam? Okay. So why do we have to segment the market? Uh, sorry, why do we... Uh, on what basis do we choose the segmentation variable? Can somebody tell me? Noura, go ahead. Um, if the variable that we chose is relevant and results in changing the product, then we chose this variable. We change, not Noura, I, you're right, but not just the product, Noura, results in changing any component of my marketing mix. Yes. Yeah, and even if you're going to change your communication strategy, if you're going to change your uh, packaging, like what happens in Starbucks, for example, in uh, in relative seasons, it changes the packaging. Huh? In yes. some occasions, it changes the packaging. In some occasions, like Christmas, like uh, Ramadan, like Eid, like religious and also social occasions, like Valentine, like and 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 so on. So if I have to, ch I will change my packaging. I will change my atmosphere, my uh, inside the stores, and all this. It's all part of the marketing mix. So if I'm going to change any component of the marketing mix to be able to satisfy the needs of the different profiles of this segment, that means that this variable is relevant to me. So in occupation, we chose occupation for demographics, we chose life stage, we chose and, and so on. And these are the different uh, profiles for each, as you can see here. Tamam. We chose uh, uh, um, geographic, for example, uh, we chose uh, weather, uh, as you can see, we chose seasons, different seasons, uh, moving on. Uh, in, we chose also in demographic regions, our continent, and we put them down into Gulf, Middle East, North Africa, Latin America, Europe, and so on. 
and then we come back come to the behavioral. In the behavioral, we the variables that we selected are benefit south and consumption rate of coffee and also occasions. Benefit south, what are the different profiles that we can target? What are the different segments that we can target? People who are convenient, people who want energy, people who like or prefer or who go after taste, people who are emotionally and in love with the brand, people who, who go to the brand for social acceptance. These are different target markets or target segments. I want to say segment, not market, that we can uh, uh, يعني, target now or in the future that we identified from the benefit south and so on. Zayi Makeda in the washing detergent, PNG, they have mummies who prefer uh, ec economy, some are, are, are more into uh, other and some are more into softness, some are more into cleanliness, some are more into whiteness. خلاص. Brand for each. This is what they chose. PNG. Based on benefit segmentation, uh, consumption rate high, uh, heavy coffee drinkers, uh, average, uh, low, uh, consumption, and, and so on. Occasions, religious occasions, uh, non religious or social occasions, they also change their marketing mix based on different occasions. We can add more, by the way, segmentation variables, but for simplicity, I chose only some. But the most important thing is to understand how to choose the variables. They, Manura and me, we said how to choose the variables. If I'm going to change any component of my marketing mix, satisfy the needs of the, of the different profiles of this variable, that means this variable is relevant. If my, I, my marketing mix is indifferent for this variable, regardless of the profiles, if there is no need to segment and burden yourself with markets that you may not want to target in the future because it's a burden for you don't do it okay the last one psychographic segmentation one of the very important ones uh, you can use vals if you want val scheme a val scheme is different than this time a val scheme in afl achievers or actualizers or you can use it if you want but also you can just use normal segmenting using lifestyle like here for example people who are sporty slash healthy looking for healthy options people who are practical just want something on the go coffee on the go so i would also match it with the convenience in terms of behavioral people who are ambitious people who are adventurous people who are just basically traditional when it comes to coffee they just go for the traditional coffee tuck 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 needs and even their choices in the menu will be very traditional and so on so this is the segmentation that we finished to understand segmentation how we make segmentation segmentation is very important as i said because to be able also to plan your resources to plan your marketing strategy in a proper way to plan your needs and your, uh, uh, to be able to distribute them in the, in the right way, especially now when we are living in a world that's full of, you know, uh, uh, يعني challenges and things that we have to face. Segmenting makes you understand more. I like this, the last two questions really, يعني. Can you further describe target segments, uh, markets for Starbucks from the segment uh, portfolio? Because here, next, we're going to be talking about targeting. تمام? Next, we're going to be talking about targeting type. Uh, uh, I will assume that you have a knowledge about targeting. So let me ask you this question. What targeting strategy do you think would you recommend for Starbucks, given all this, given all this segmentation? And what targeting strategy do you suggest for Starbucks? Or uh, what targeting strategy does it actually use? Huh, come on. What a targeting strategy does Starbucks use? Huh? And it's written. Come in, come on, girls. What is everybody? Some people are going to get really low grades in class participation. Yeah, come on. You don't know? Guess type. What targeting strategy does Starbucks use? Differentiated, differentiated target strategy. Yes, differentiate because it's written right there. What do you mean by differentiate targeting strategy? Aya, what does it mean? Like they target do? everyone, like youth, uh, no. the old people, like no, um, no, 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 they don't like target in everyone. Terms of that's products, not, that's in not terms the of answer. That's, that's not the answer. They don't target everyone. That different defies the whole markets. process. Uh, different target segments with different and products different and different needs. marketing offerings. It target it targets different target market segments with coffee different lovers, market offerings. Target that's what it coffee does. Lovers. The man, you're not just coffee lovers. No, 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 no. Some people, I don't like coffee and I go to Starbucks. They don't just target coffee lovers. This doesn't mean if they target only coffee lovers, the, different, the, the targeting strategy will not be differentiated, will be concentrated. Okay? Uh, they target, uh, target market number one. Here, when we talk about differentiated targeting strategy, it means we have to define at least 
three uh, target markets, three to four target markets, even more, three plus target markets. Here, I'll, for simplicity, I defined only three. Uh, adventurous teens, can you describe them? Adventurous teens, from where are you going to describe them? From where? Hmm. And in which column are you going to use to describe this market? Which column? Um, the segment uh, profile. Bravo, Yamarov. Yes, yes, from here. Describe them from here. They're typically students. Uh, they uh, they live in, for example, hot to dry uh, weather. Uh, they uh, uh, they prefer uh, yeah, any, uh, the seasons that they are high demand on is, for example, summer and maybe uh, spring uh, and, and, and so on. You start describing them. The, be the main benefits they go there for is for social acceptance and uh, emotional attachment to the brand. If you understand me, they reside mainly in the Gulf and Middle East, for example, and so on. You start describing them from here, from here, from this column, the segment, the segment profile. The target market number two that I described was the mummies that love shopping. Okay, also describe them from here. White collar employees, target market number three. White collar employees, those businessmen and employees that are working and are looking and are looking at Starbucks in a different perspective. Yeah, they uh, may be ha taking heavy doses of coffee, uh, looking for workspace to work. They go there for workspace uh, and 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 so on. So all this is uh, describing the different target. You can Alfekra, we can define target market number four. Can someone tell me another target market I forgot or I didn't mention? Yell. Mm, come on. Come on, try to guess. There is more target markets for Starbucks, by the way. Huh? Look at the psychographic segmentation. Try to define them psychographically first and then start to max and match, mix and match, sorry, from the profile. You know, it's like as if you're playing cards, you know, this process. Of, of targeting and selecting target markets and describing them and getting from the profiles the different characteristics that are suitable for them. It's like as if you're playing cards. It's a, it's a mix and match match thing. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting and challenging at the same time. And it allows you to describe new markets that no one has 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 yeah, and it has tapped before. Yeah, and it's something like an elderly market, for example, for Starbucks. It can be a new target market they can think in the future of targeting with specific products and specific ideas. Why not? Uh, what uh, who what's the target market that we can add now uh, to Starbucks? Hmm. Not in the future, but now. What? Yella, come on. I'll give bonus to whoever is going to. Do you mean like uh, that are not added that we can add now? My Did dear, I, I defined I defined from this table three target markets. Right? What are they? Number one, what the adventurous teens. Right? Number two. Mummies that love shopping. Number three, white collar employees. What other target markets can we define for? Can we As students, for maybe students. From the, from, the, from the table, my adventurous teens are students. Are typically students. That's what I want to say. What else? Who else? Dabia. Um, Professor, you Go mentioned ahead. last time you you mentioned last time about tweens. It's a new category that are more uh, um, in okay. norm. I would go with that. Ah, tweens, bravo! We can target tweens. Quite good, good thinking. I like that you're thinking. But yes, tweens that are into, for example, uh, exotic or uh, new kinds of uh, of drinks. They are uh, 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 leading. Uh, uh, lifestyles that are mainly ambitious like this. Yes, nice, nice, nice. Who else? Gerrit teens, twins. One more, one more. Huh? Thank you, Adabia. Uh, Haya, go ahead, yeah, Haya. One more. Come uh, on, guys. Children. Come on. Maybe children. No, no. Twins. Okay, children it doesn't really target, target, target children. It has maybe. Uh, yeah, I would put it, but not alone. I have to describe it. Yeah, it's inside the segments themselves. Yeah. But give me something more that it can really target. And about targeting children is a big question mark. Huh? Alone, yani, as a segment. And I would say that they go with the teens and they go with this, yani, the kinds of drinks that they kind of like to drink, like the milkshakes and all that. Shuruk. Hmm? Uh, maybe like consumers who are a bit um, health conscious and uh, they still. Bravo. Products, Bravo. Yes, I would say sporty. Yeah. Yes, bravo, Aliki. I would say sporty slash health conscious. 
Take it from the psychographic, we say, Felix. Uh, they will rather they go with drinks bad that are full of uh, nutritious things. They they maybe they will take more the skim, the decaf, the almond milk. The... Tamam? Tamam? Okay? Perfect? It's clear now? Okay, let's go back. Doctor, I can say as a manager, CEO. Sorry, who? Manager, CEO. Yeah, but this is what we call the white collar employees yeah, under the yeah, we can say but it, yeah, it's a niche 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 but i would say they all go under the working uh, category yeah, people who work, yeah, people who are uh, businessmen who are working who are you know these it, it comes under it, this i think that it's going to be the same products yeah but it's interesting i'm happy that you are trying to you know come up with new target markets for them and also to define the current target markets for Starbucks based on the segmentation scheme that we have done. So now you understand segmentation and targeting that I will go back and revise some things about targeting so that we can make sure that you understand it perfectly before we start talking about positioning. Uh, did, we, did we mention the elderly also? The elder people? There's something missing from this. Uh, one second, and I think this is not the right PowerPoint presentation. Elderly, it's a new market segment. I agree with you. My elderly is a new target segment. Yes, I agree. Tamam, I agree with you. One second, I don't know. There's something missing. Uh, you can ask me questions until I upload the right file. Because this is not the right file for some reason. Yeah. Uh, doctor, can I also say about the people that support the sustainability and uh, a recycling uh, product? Uh, yes, we, we can niches, but and also we talked about the uh, uh, what do you call it? The my dear, uh, uh, the people who are sporty slash health conscious, can, they can be under them, but we yeah. can also define them. We can also define them, of course, as a separate segment. I agree with you. Yes, now, especially that they are expanding. Here about we come to a big question. On what, be, and after we finish this, we start evaluating each segment of those. Yeah, and you call those segments, you start evaluating the profiles. Are they, are they viable? Are they accessible? Are they uh, reachable? Are they profitable? Uh, can be they be standalone or can be they be under another sub-segment? You start evaluating them. The evaluation process starts before uh, actually targeting them and dedicating a marketing mix for them because it will, will, it will cost you money. Market equals the marketing mix. How will you deal with this market? How will you satisfy your needs? What are the tools of the marketer? The marketing mix? It means budget. It means money. So you have to make sure that you're doing the right thing and that this market really is worthwhile uh, that you uh, dedicate for it a budget and it has, uh, يعني, you know, uh, uh, يعني, uh, marketing mix and 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 so on so you have to make sure that you are doing the right thing that's very important and that it's worth it and that market is is, is profitable enough for you and that it, it, it will it can be stand it can stand alone you don't have to put it under a specific uh, segment and so on which brings us to the targeting strategies again small revision about targeting small revision and I will add something also to the slide here we said these are after we segment and we put our segment profiles, it's time to target. It's time to target. So when it comes to targeting, I have a quantum from undifferentiated mass marketing, which I personally believe is dead, doesn't exist anymore, till what we call micro marketing, what we are living in now. And I would add to it also, after micro marketing, I would say mass customization. Mass customization, write this term. It's extremely important, mass customization. We'll talk about it now. In undifferentiated marketing, we can talk about, I, I, the example that I can remember was Ford in the 60s. The car, Ford in the 60s. Coca-Cola and Pepsi maybe in the 70s. When there was only one Coke for all, just one Pepsi for all. Now, does this exist in 2021? No, it does not. No. No. We are moving towards others. So undifferentiated our mass marketing, mm, questionable now, okay? So let's move on. What's differentiated? You, you choose differentiated marketing. Well, I, and I have uh, the facilities to be able to uh, develop uh, 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 many varieties of my product and my market. I can meet all the needs. I can have, like Toyota. Toyota, they have from 
كامري كورولا تيل لان كروزر differentiated targeting strategy I have different I decide to target several segments in the market with separate offers or different offers maybe different sometimes different brands like what P&G is doing with the washing detergent and the and this they have this capability they have the resources they see the difference between the different segments the segments are not eating or cannibalizing each other so I can do it let's go ahead and use differentiated targeting who else uses differentiated targeting come on give me examples and I'll talk to Toyota and Starbucks more Apple? examples please Apple fin Apple who a telephone no in with specific market no not Apple hmm. who's the main competitor for Apple I think Samsung because they have a variety Samsung. of different things yes bravo Samsung mashallah 3,000 uh, kinds of also, phones and also the targeting Nike different Nike. target segment who Nike uh, also Manai Sorry? Corporation they have uh, diversification strategy. And that, no, diversification is totally different than what we're talking about here. We are talking about targeting. We're not talking about uh, a business portfolio. Business portfolio is diversification. Totally different, my dear story. Okay. Uh, is this clear? Uh, understand me. Okay, differentiated targeting means that you are delivering different, you are targeting different, several target segments with different needs, with different offers. Yani, زي Toyota, زي uh, Nike, زي uh, McDonald's, uh, زي whatever. You understand me? Yani, that's what you're trying to do. Okay, تمام. Uh, most of the brands, by the way, use differentiated targeting strategy nowadays. Most of the brands. They use differentiated targeting strategy uh, nowadays, like the uh, apparel stores, apparel stores like Gap, like this, uh, and so on. Tamam? This is the uh, 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 differentiated targeting strategy. Tamam? Who uses uh, concentrated targeting strategy? Hmm. Let's move. We're getting to where the are we now the going? Uh, uh, targeting more broadly or targeting more narrowly? What's happening Na in the market? Narrowly, Professor. Narrowly. narrowly. Niching, niching, cutting down. The needs of the people are becoming more uh, specific. Now, uh, uh, environmentally friendly, uh, against animal testing, uh, don't don't uh, like, I don't know what, uh, veggies, uh, we are going, yeah, plant-based, uh, keto, we are really, uh, the market is becoming uh, more and more niched. So who uses concentrated one-on-one -on -one segments or uh, what we call it? Sorry, uh, 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 concentrated strategy. Uh, ah. The brands that make, for example... Um, no, give uh, me an example of a brand. I don't want uh, to explain. Just give me a brand. Who? Maybe Sephora. Ah. Gucci. Gucci, bravo. All, most of the, uh, most of the uh, 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 luxury brands luxury fall under this category. Most um, of the luxury brands. Uh, 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 Rolex. Uh, Lexus, Lexus, show by the difference between Toyota and Lexus. Toyota, so many segments. Lexus, one or two max, one or two max, okay? Uh, Rolex, same. Uh, what else? Apple, nice. iPhone, Apple, the body same. Shop? Okay, the body shop, bravo, yes, it's specific segments. Bravo. Oh, Sephora. Uh, Sephora. Sephora, not Sephora, mashallah, yani, so many offerings. Yani, I don't think it's niched. Yani, Sephora, no. Sephora is differentiated. So many different brands, so many different offerings, different kinds of markets, different kinds of women, different kinds of men, teens, old ladies, the teenagers, the twins, mashallah, yani, Sephora, mashallah. No, I don't think Sephora is very differentiated. What else niched? Khalas, we said good examples. Let's move on. It's only for babies, since it's only for babies. Who? Oh, sorry? Uh, Huggies. It's like a, the diaper, diaper brand. Huggies, Huggies is very much niched, yes. Huggies is very much niched, yes. I agree with you. Let's move on. Micro-marketing or local marketing, individual marketing. Ah, we are getting closer. Like what? Like Bentley, Bentley, uh, Rolls-Royce. Huh? Oh, I am customizing the product on you. 
We are moving towards mass customization. Remember that. We are moving towards mass customization. Thank you to technology. Now, for example, if you have a wedding or something and you're your wedding, you can how you can go online and get choose the, the cut of your diamond in the ring and choose the kind of gold or in the qirat and the, the weight and the and the color and 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 design your wedding ring from A to Z and even using nine or seven D technology, try it on. Uh, it's crazy and this is what we're moving to you think that this store does this wedding ring and stuff only for you or does it to millions of mummies around the world customized no i'm not this is not the answer for the question i'm saying do you think I'm that this customer is, is doing it just for you or well, is doing it to many mummies around uh, many sorry no, uh, many people, ladies around it. Many many people. Yes, so and this is what we call this is what we call mass customization mass and that's what we're moving in technology has been the driving force behind this technology has been the driving force behind the mass customization that we are living in now okay this is what we're living in now okay this is the life this is what we're living in uh, this is the market sorry i mean uh, and the smart companies are those who start to satisfy these specific needs that you're going to tell me top doctor companies like Toyota, companies like Nike, companies like McDonald's, companies like who have mass customization, uh, sorry, who have the, a differentiated uh, targeting strategy like Starbucks. How can they satisfy the needs of the niche that appear in the markets? Yeah, you know what I mean? They do. They do. What do they do? They do. They're very smart, actually. Okay, what do they do? Huh? They make different models for different types of people. Yeah, and if, for example, Hoda, let me tell you, uh, Nike, you can, the Mish Nike here in the differentiated, no, it has some of its uh, uh, يعني, uh, practices in the market are micro or customized marketing. You go online, you can go online, you can make your own shoe. You can choose the design, you can choose technology, you can choose the color, you can tuck, tuck, tuck and make your own shoe. Although it uses a differentiated targeting strategy, however, it has some mass marketing, uh, mass, sorry, customized and micro and uh, niched marketing practices is this clear uh, same thing for mcdonald's make your own burger you can choose the patty you can choose the kind of meat you can choose the topping tuck, 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 tuck. so i have also and yeah, this big name is really very smart also very separate. smart okay. uh, very smart because they are trying also to cover niches that appear in the market because they are strong they keep true to their targeting strategy which is differentiated but they have by some uh, uh, what i want to say micro or customized marketing or targeting practices uh, same goes for uh, mcdonald's we said mikey we said uh, who else use differentiator toyota they have the car prius prius car is an electric car made for people who are sustainable who are with green technology who don't want to have petrol and and so on niche so mass customization mass customization and of course the driving force behind this has been all the way technology is it clear? We understand targeting now. Any questions about targeting? Tamam. Can we move on, please? Okay. Product positioning, which is the last step. You know, product positioning is like the cherry on the top. You know, you finish your your cake, you finish your whatever you're doing, and then you just put the cherry to give it the lovely, you know, outlook. And this is the perception that you want the consumers to have in their mind when they see the cherry. Khalas, this is the the last thing, the same thing. You segment it, you define your markets, you wrote them down, you, do, you, you define your targeting strategy. Will you be narrowly broad or will you, will you be broadly targeting? What are you going to be doing, tamam? And then how do you want your target market or target markets to see you, to perceive you, to feel you? What's the essence of your brand? How do you want to position it in the mind of the consumer? What do you want to intend them to feel about you when they see you? What is the image that you want to articulate in their mind? All this, all this, all this is about product uh, positioning. There is many ways to create product positioning. You can go the tangible and you can go the intangible way. Of course, now the trend is the intangible way because this is the gate for emotions and emotions is the gate for brand loyalty. And brand loyalty is the way to what? brand a huh? equity and brand value we talked about this before and 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 so on jihan go ahead uh doctor when i'm doing positioning as when the brand become as a luxury brand mm -hmm. what's, what's the question position? 
I mean, I mean positioning when I'm having a brand and the brand only sells luxury product. This is as a positioning. Uh, no, it's this is no oh, the positioning, my dear. Did you see the marketing brief? Did you see the example of the positioning statement for Coca Cola? I wrote you. Every brand has distinctive positioning strategy and positioning statement. Okay, Be selling luxury is not positioning. This is what you're doing. I'm talking about positioning the image that you want to keep in the consumer's mind. If you're already a luxury brand, but you're a luxury brand, خلاص, this is the, but you, يعني, Burberry. So what's going to make it different between Burberry and Gucci and Louis Vuitton and Chanel? If they all say, we are selling luxury. So what's the difference between them? How can you differentiate between them? One of the main things when you write your positioning statement is to make sure, is to make sure that you have uh, covered uh, many things. The belief, the promise, the competitor's comparison. The title of the brand. Uh, yeah, and this is very the, the the this is very important. You will see it now. And I got you some nice things how to write a positioning statement. So you will see it now. That I fill some I stuffed in some extra slides for you. But for now, this is an example of Coca-Cola. Look at the, how it has positioned itself. For every, by the way, it changes every year. It's not something static that stays with you forever. You change it every year. Look at how Coca-Cola has differently positioned itself from 19 from 1886 to 2011, and still, of course, until now. Look at the different taglines. Of course, it uses this taglines in its advertising and its communication and its, and its IMC campaigns. Here are different ways that you can position yourself based on. And please try to use more things that have that create the emotional contact, that create the emotional attachment. Look at this slide. It's even better. It comes better here. These strategies are generally used in combination rather than as a standalone single strategy yani if you're going to be this is the best ways to position best brand positioning strategies here when you come to position value or price positioning quality positioning benefit positioning competitive competitive competitor based positioning celebrity driven positioning problem and solution positioning you have to think how are you going to position the brand how are you going to reposition your brands you are working on on your projects you have to rewrite and you have to write a new positioning statement for these brands after segmenting and targeting so what how are you going to write it what are you going to include you understand me what are you going to rest on you can use a combination of these not just one alone by the way and so on so i'm giving you these slides are very important for the project and for your understanding and grasping concepts of the course come on as you can see they are never completely fixed you have to change it every year and every two years, whatever, how you're going to be dealing with this, because you have a marketing plan every year, right? So you come every year and you have to amend your positioning statement based on your new marketing plan. Maybe you are going to target new markets. Maybe you're going to change the outlook of the product. Maybe you're going to change the, uh, the, 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 the image. You need to make some upgrades. You need to make some clarity. You need to reposition, whatever. So this is something static, uh, sorry, dynamic and not static that keeps changing uh, all the time. Tamam? Uh, here, how to write your positioning statement. Make sure it includes your target market. Make sure it includes your category reference, as you said, for example, as you hand luxury in this case. Make sure it includes the actual benefit, the meat. What are you giving to the consumer? And of course, compare to your competitors. Huh? And make sure it gives them the reason to believe, the promise, the, the, the edge, the differentiation, the, the, the something that they will come back to, and so on. Is this clear? This will help you a lot, by the way, when you are doing your projects and you are writing your positioning statements. Jeanne, is it clear now? Yes, doctor, thank you. And also, I put for you an example of the positioning statement of Coca-Cola inside your marketing briefs. So now you have an example, you have a way to write it. Yeah, you don't have an excuse to write an exquisite positioning statement for your brands in your projects. And this is the last thing, or before the last thing in your uh, marketing briefs. The last thing will be just to write general marketing objectives for the coming year. Here, but just this is just a small introduction about IMC objectives because in chapter five and six we will learn together the different models and different theories that can be used to write down IMC objectives. But here, what should we take into consideration when writing down our IMC objectives or our communication objectives? For Benit Khalas, we finished the marketing brief. Thank you. Give it to me. Put it in front of me because I will use the marketing brief to write the next part of the project, which is the creative brief. The creative brief starts with your IMC objectives. What should you take into consideration? Who are your target markets? From where shall I get from the marketing brief? What is your positioning strategy or positioning statement? From where shall I get from the marketing brief? 
who are you, what the, what's the organization, what's the structure of the organization, what's the context of the organization, give me an introduction about it, how does it look like on the marketing brief, what's your budget, I will give it to you, you'll get your budget from, that's the only constraint that you have is the budget. You'll take it after you finish your marketing briefs. And at the end of the day, what kind of IMC components or tools are available in the market that I can use? And this is going to come from your media research, from the media research, you will take the assignment for uh, the uh, uh, number two, that's about the uh, media research and about the uh, Northwest study on Sunday, inshallah, because I want to leave you this weekend to sit and think and plan about the project more because you're running out of time. So I'll give it to you on Sunday, inshallah, not today. Okay. Uh, some examples of IMC or communication objectives, some examples, as you can see. This is some examples of objectives that you can rest on. How do we choose our, our how methods for determining marketing communication budgets or advertising or IMC budgets? These are different kinds of methods. We only don't have to go through them all, but you need to understand that different ways. Sometimes it's a percentage of sales. Sometimes it's what can I what can I afford because I'm a startup. I'm small. I don't have a huge budget. Uh, sometimes it's uh, compared to my compare. How much is the, com the the budget for Pepsi? So Coke, okay, double. Let's beat them. Let's do something better. That's that. So you, you look at your competitors. Sometimes it's based on your tasks and objectives. So you have objectives, tasks. So based on that, you will, you will put your budgets. The budgets can be determined by objectives, depending on what you want to reach. And this is the most used one, by the way, and the best method now to be able to also preserve and capitalize on resources inside companies. Quantitative methods, just giving an equation, and you use it for setting your budget every year. So these are different ways and different types. You can just go over and read about them. Uh, of course, the different schedules and how uh, uh, you put your schedule. Let me postpone this when we come to talk about media placing and uh, media uh, buying, tamam, and how you're going to be arranging your uh, 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 schedules for your campaigns. Um, what else? Yani chapter 5 and 6. We will be covering in detail in chapter five and six about the uh, uh, communication uh, objectives and how to write them down and what method are we going to be using to write down. There are different methods, but we will be resting on the most comprehensive one, which is the hierarchy of effects model. Inshallah, in chapter five and six, we will be covering this and we will be taking also uh, some assignments, we will be making presentations, and it will be very interesting. Yeah, it's a very interesting chapter, inshallah. Um, what else, what else, what else I want to say in this uh, chapter? Yeah, and I just wanted to highlight on this slide for the uh, communication uh, schedule. There is the pulsating, pulsating schedule, there's the fighting schedule, the continuous schedule. Pulsating schedule is like, you know, um, it's like advertising that you do uh, throughout the entire year, but uh, sometimes you uh, give it a push of more spending when it comes to occasions that are related to you. For example, uh, you're selling ice cream, for example. So in holidays or in summertime, you boost the budget, you spend more, you put additional budget because you know that you the demand here is higher and, and so on. In specific occasions, you just go and you push. I love this ad, uh, the one for Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia is, one of, is my favorite spread cheese. Yeah, I love it also. Uh, this is interesting to see that they are doing uh, cream cheese, but chocolate cream cheese to satisfy the needs of those, the chocolate lovers. So it's like, go on, indulge. And it's very, very, very relevant to the image. When you see the image, you have to indulge. It's beautiful. Yeah. So interesting to see the way that they execute the ad and very simple to the point, not too much text. The image speaks for itself and just shoot your message and let the consumer imagine and, and 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 look at the brand image how it's articulated in this image and in this ad in, in a very interesting and creative way execution is very is key as we talked before in the previous campaigns remember in uh, chicken the eat more chicken and other campaigns execution is very important now very important the fighting schedule is just uh, just uh, allocating the budget only through peak times only through peak times we will have but throughout the year i don't have advertising Okay, and many people do that to cut on budget. Continuous, of course, is naturally dividing the budget equally throughout the year without having to boost in certain areas like the pulsating one or flight and how just specific times of the year. Right, let's move on. Uh, let's move on. Khalas, yani we're all finished. Well, this chapter is done. Uh, we are finished here. 
طبعا this is just an example of some IMC components breakdown of marketing we're going to be studying all kinds of IMC components and promotional mix elements and this is just some sort of uh, additional slides to show you some statistics of global spending of ads and also uh, about uh, marketing expenditures mainly طبعا advertising is still the, the the star when it comes to marketing uh, budgets and IMC uh, budgets dedication and so on تمام allocation 